Hey y'all, Kyle, AA0Z here. Wanted to do a video. I've gotten a bunch of questions on my remote shack and what it looks like. And I'm sure that you're probably going, not going to be impressed on what this looks like, but this is my remote shack. What I want to do is go over some of the components and how they're connected and uh, maybe give you some ideas on remoting your shack. So stay tuned. All right, so let's start over here with the radio. This is a Flex 6700. It is two U's. It has rack ears, which do not come with the unit. All of the new units, I believe, are for U. A U is a measurement in the networking world. It is 1.75 inches. So the old versions of the units were two U. And uh, so now the, the new versions are for you. So if you get a new version, I believe you can uh, put rack ears on them, but uh, just be aware it's going to take up more space. This is an Astron power supply, 30 amp switching power supply. I run this power supply at about 14 and a half volts. The Flex likes 14 and a half volts. It is a lot cleaner on single sideband. So just keep that in mind. This is a Furman power conditioner. You can find these uh, musicians use these to uh, for clean power. Here's my KAT 500 watt tuner. I only wear, run this barefoot. I only run it 100 watts. But uh, if I ever got an amplifier, this uh, would handle it up to 500 watts. This is a very, very good tuner. It is expensive, but it does do automatic mode, so it will count the frequency and tune it accordingly. Or you can uh, send the band information from the Flex through the USB cable directly into the Flex, I'm sorry, into the KAT500, and uh, it will uh, do fine frequency tuning. And also it has a three antenna switch, so you can control the antennas through the, the, the front of the rig or through the serial port. And then also has some meters out on the SWR and the power outage. I have a W2 watt meter by Elecraft, and this uh, shows me after the radio, before the tuner, I wanna make sure that my radio is seeing 50 ohms, and I wanna make sure that it's got a good SWR, and I'm putting 100 watts into the air. So that W2 shows me that information I have this hooked into a serial port, and actually both of these are hooked into serial ports and uh, connect into this um, IP to RS-232 converter, which I'll get into a little bit later. But I can get control data and information out of both of these machines and put it onto the IP network. All right, moving on to the remote board. So this is a digital loggers AC switch. Power comes in from utility up here at the top. And this has eight switched ports on it. So it is, it runs on the network. You can get to it via a web page, and you're able to turn on and off every single one of these ports, all eight ports individually. It also does some ping tests. So if you set it up to say ping Google and ping um, your DNS and it fails those pings, it has an automatic reboot function to say, I want you to reboot port number eight, which might be your DSL or your cable router, or maybe it's your home router, and reboot it and wait 10 minutes and then start the pings over and then if it's fine, that's great. If it's not fine, reboot it again in another 10 minutes and do that five times or maybe 10 times. It's all configurable. And if you still don't get a response, then quit. The, the internet is out. So it is a nice way to remote control all of your AC devices. If you want to reboot them, if you want to power cycle them, uh, or if you want to do some logic on rebooting if the internet or if that device goes down. 
this trip light power conditioner is fed in line and I, I do some additional filtering uh, with this, this trip light. So port one here is a switch port, comes over, gets plugged into the trip light, or the, plug, the trip light gets plugged into switch one, and then coming off of the trip light, I supply power to this Astron power supply. The first thing I do whenever I remote into my station is I remote IP into my digital loggers, and I flip switch uh, number one on, which then supplies power to my, my power supply, and it provides power to my, my flex radio. The second thing I do is I IP into my uh, KMtronics web switch. So this, this um, relay box down here, it is on the network, got an IP address, it has a web interface, and I have port one of this device coming into the back of the flex, and the flex has a remote on RCA connector, and if you short that pin, it will turn the flex on. If you unshort it so it becomes open, it will turn the flex off. So as long as that pin is shorted, the flex will be on. So I've wired that up into port number one, and I go in and I click the button in the, the KM Tronics, and then that turns the flex on. After I've turned the power on, on the Astron power supply via the digital loggers AC switch. The button on the AC switch, I'm sorry, the button on the Astron is always on. So I control the Astron power AC power going to it via the digital loggers. The KM Tronics relay here, I've wired the last relay to the push to talk on the back of the flex. The reason why I do that is SmartLink, which is the remote control software that Flex uses. If you lose your SmartLink account, or I believe if you upgrade, or they do an upgrade and you have to verify that this machine is connected with your account, you have to hit the PTT button. That is another RCA connector on the back of the Flex. I've just wired this to the normally open ports to the ring and the, 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 the sleeve of the RCA connector. And then I, I click that once and click it again and it closes it. It enables the PTT and then it opens it. So therefore I can um, click the push to talk remotely if I need it. So some of the other things in this board is the Netgear switch that I have that controls all of, or that uh, is my, my switching for my IP network. I have one Ethernet coming in, and all of these are shielded cables. I decided to, to use shielded cables. The one Ethernet comes in and gets um, connected to the, to the Netgear switch. I did have a Ubiquiti switch here, but the PoE put hash all over 40 meters, and I figured out that it was the PoE switch. And even if I turned it off, those Ubiquiti switches are so RF noisy that I decided to, to just put a dumb switch in here. This Netgear switch is RF quiet, even with these, uh, these wall warts. Over here, I have a Raspberry Pi. This is a Pi 4, 4 gigs. And I use this to SSH into the device, and I build some tunnels. So therefore, I can get into the back end. Um, and maybe I'll show that in, a ne in another video. But uh, I use SSH to, to tunnel into my system here and get into the web pages of these devices. I also run Node-RED on this. And Node Red is a dashboard, and I'll show you a picture of the, the Node Red here. The Node Red is the dashboard, and I can control every single thing on in this picture with Node Red. So if you don't know anything about Node Red, head over to Groups.io and type in Ham Radio Node Red, and there's a whole group over there with guys and gals programming Node Red uh, flows for Ham Radio. It is awesome. Once you look at the Node Red stuff and see what it can do. It will change the way that you look at ham radio on a dashboard configuration. So go over there and check it out. So just above the KM Tronics 
web relay switch is a US Riot USR N540. This is a RS-232, so it comes in RS-232 on the right-hand side, and it comes out Ethernet on the right-hand side. And this is a device where I plug in my KAT500 and my W2 watt meter. It runs RS-232 over here to the IP, and then it spits out all of the RS-232 information on different ports. So I've got a port associated with KAT500. Let's say that is 1300. And then I have 1301 associated with the, 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 the watt meter. So all that information gets dumped into an IP connection, and I can peel that data per port into Node Red, or I can run locally here on my computer. I've got uh, the, the watt meter program, and I've got the KAT program that I can monitor these devices remotely through IP, then gets converted to RS-232 and plugs into the back. So all of these devices, these 12-volt devices, get power through this power strip, an Anderson power pull power strip, and it is fed off of this power supply. The next version of this will have two power supplies, one just to run 12 volts so I can power the peripherals, and then one power supply that is dedicated to the, the flex. These devices run on anything between 8 and 24 volts, so I can feed this a higher power outage, and uh, these devices don't care. Up here are two remote antenna disconnects. They are made by Paradan. You can buy these off DX Engineering, and basically what happens is whenever you supply 12 volts to these devices, a relay inside of here connects and connects the antenna. When you disconnect 12 volts, it disconnects the, the coax, and it also has lightning arresters in here. So this is a very good way to disconnect and connect your antennas remotely and have some satisfaction that uh, there is a small air gap. If you have a direct lightning strike, this is not going to work, but uh, this is some satisfaction that you've got some type of protection in your remote shack if uh, lightning would strike. You can see the grounding bus bar here. Everything is ground to the bus bar that can be ground. And then this has a cable that goes outside. It's got a lightning rod with a lightning arrestor for my single antenna, my end fed, and then that also gets fed to the electrical ground which is right outside uh, this window to the left, about 10 foot. I also have a PC, which is down here, and this runs Windows 10. It has TeamViewer on it, so I can rem remote control it through TeamViewer. I also logged into it through Chrome Remote Desktop. A PC on the remote side, I use it for digital modes. So I will run the Flex Smart SDR software on this PC, I will run a digital program instead of bringing all that data back to the local machine through a DAX channel, I will keep it local and just send the screen back to my, my local station here. So that's how I run digital modes at my remote station. All right, I also wanna go over some prices here. Up here, the digital loggers, this is $170 for the digital loggers. The trip light, I believe was $50. The switch, I'm sure that you probably have some switches lying around, but you can get uh, these switches for 50 bucks. These antenna disconnects are the, probably the most expensive thing here. This was, um, each one of these is $90, so that's $180, but they also um, make a pair of these. I'm not really sure how much they are, but uh, you can buy one unit that has two antenna disconnects, they only have one power or input for the, the devices. So that's, let's say, $200. This RS-232, the IP converter, uh, this four port was $120, but you can get a two port for $60 off of Amazon. The KM Tronics was $80 off of eBay. And then the power strip was 
let's say twenty dollars because this was a kit, and I mounted the Pi and the power strip uh, on the back of this board. I printed a, a 3D printed a connector and screwed it on. So all of these devices basically have a backing plate screwed onto the back of this piece of plywood. Piece of plywood is, I believe, three foot by four foot. So you can see that there's plenty of space here. Then my cables come in. I've got some some ferrites on here to help uh, mitigate some some RF stuff that I've got going on. The power supply, obviously you probably already have a power supply that was 150 bucks for the Astron. And uh, you'll have to take a look at what the prices are for the Elecraft stuff. I have, I have no idea. Um, but this is you know, pretty much stuff that you're probably going to have in your shack already. This PC was a refurbed PC. I got this at Micro Center. I think this was $300 and it is a i3. I forget uh, how much RAM. It's probably got eight gig of RAM in it. But uh, this was a refurb PC that I got from Micro Center. So this is the remote shack. So you can do this pretty cheaply if you've got a flex and all these components. Might have to buy some stuff on the board, but uh, y you can easily do this and remote your shack. So if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section. I will put links to all these devices down in the description. If you click on those, I get a small commission. Uh, if you buy them through the affiliate link, 73.